Ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to welcome you to our course, Physical Chemistry 101. My name is Dr. Lauth, and this is going to be an in a nutshell lecture about thermodynamics. In thermodynamics, we're dealing with a range of energy and energy-like state variables that are first getting used to. Today, I would like to give an overview of the most important of these variables on H, enthalpy, S, entropy, and G, Gibbs free energy. Thermodynamics looks at the world in its own perspective. It considers systems that are in a state. We describe this state with so-called state variables, properties of the system. Besides using the well-known state variables, pressure, temperature, volume, and so on, thermodynamics additionally invents other variables of a system, mostly to describe energy-like properties. State variables suddenly change if we change the state. Change from an initial to a final state is called a thermodynamic process. Of particular importance are the following questions. How does energy change during the process? How does disorder or chaos change during the process? And, most important, how does instability change during the process? To answer these questions quantitatively, that is, with numbers, we need the new state variables H, S, and G. Each major state variable is linked to a universal law of thermodynamics. We'll start our review with the state variable H, the enthalpy. The enthalpy is a measure of the amount of energy contained in a system. The greater the energy content of the system, the greater is the enthalpy. The enthalpy was introduced, among other reasons, to concisely state the first law of thermodynamics. It's the fundamental theorem of conservation of energy. The total energy of the universe is constant. To apply this law to a process, the energies and enthalpies of the systems involved have to be known. We will discuss some examples later. Each variable in science must be measurable. Although the absolute value of the enthalpy is not available, enthalpy changes are very easy to measure. Each amount of heat which is measured in a spontaneous isobaric process, Q sub P, corresponds to an enthalpy change delta H. The process variable heat is changed to a state variable for this specific case. Enthalpy does depend on several properties of the system, in particular on temperature, on phase and on chemical composition. The enthalpy has no natural zero. In chemistry, the so-called standard formation enthalpies are very common. The enthalpies of all elements at 25 degrees Celsius is arbitrarily set to zero. So let's first look at a physical process through enthalpy glasses. We'll apply the first law to a physical cycle process to a Carnot engine. A Carnot engine is operating between two temperature levels, T1 and T2. T1 is a high temperature, T2 is a low temperature. Heat Q1 flows from the top level into the Carnot engine. The engine gives off useful work W to the surroundings and also a further heat Q sub 2 flows to the lower temperature level. In this direction of the cycle, the engine operates as a Carnot heat engine. 
How does the first law comment this process? The first law calls for the conservation of total energy. We see three amounts of energy in the Carnot cycle. Absorbed energy and emitted energy must be equal in magnitude. Due to the sign convention, we may formulate the energy balance as follows. Q1 plus Q2 plus W ref is equal to zero. This is the comment of the first law. According to this equation, it would also be possible that Q2 is equal to zero, assuming Q1 corresponds to the negative of W ref. We will see that this case is forbidden by the second law. The first law is a kind of accountant in the universe. It makes sure that no energy is lost. Another important variable, which is introduced by thermodynamics, is somewhat harder to grasp than the enthalpy. It is the entropy, abbreviated by the letter S. The entropy is a measure of the chaos in a system. Measure of disorder, measure of energy distribution, of negative information. For all processes observed in the universe, entropy will never decrease. Entropy can only stay the same, in the reversible case, or increase. This is the statement of the second law. The entropy the chaos of the universe will never decrease. Measurement of entropy can be done by measuring heat. The quotient of the reversible heat, which occurs in a process or would occur in an equivalent process, divided by temperature results in a kind of reduced heat, Q over T, which corresponds to the entropy change. As enthalpy, entropy depends on temperature, phase, and chemical structure. And in addition, entropy still depends very much on the dilution. The more dilute a system, the greater its chaos, the greater its entropy. Entropy has got, in contrast to the enthalpy, a natural zero. This is the main message of the third law. The entropy of a perfect crystal is zero at zero Kelvin. We now return to our Carnot engine and consider the same cycle through entropy classes. Where does entropy change in the cycle? The first law is still valid and it is not affected by the following considerations. We'll consider the process entropically. The hot temperature reservoir gives off heat, which means the entropy of this reservoir decreases by the amount Q1 over T1. In temperature reservoir T2, entropy increases. Entropy change delta S2 equals Q2 over T2. According to the second law, the sum of the entropy changes must never be negative. It is greater than zero for irreversible processes. Only in the limiting case of reversible processes, such as here at the idealized Carnot process, it is equal to zero. In the reversible Carnot process, the sum is exactly zero. This prompts the second law for the Carnot engine, and this is now limiting its efficiency eta. We combine these two equations for the first and the second law and calculate the quotient negative W over Q1, defined as the efficiency eta. We see that the efficiency must always be less than 1. A Carnot engine and any other reversible heat engine can never fully convert heat into work. The best efficiency in the reversible case 
will be delta T over T1. For instance, that a temperature of 600 kelvins for T1 and 300 kelvins for T2, then at best half of the absorbed heat Q1 can be converted into work. This limitation applies to any heat engine, for example, for a thermal power plant or a diesel engine. Heat is uh, some kind of non-noble form of energy and can be converted to the noble work only to some extent. The upper limit is the Carnot efficiency. And the reason for this limitation is the second law. If we combine enthalpy and entropy in an appropriate manner, we get the extremely useful state variable G, Gibbs free energy or free enthalpy. G is a measure for the instability of a system. Unlike with enthalpy and entropy, G is applicable to a process without considering the entire universe. We can confine ourselves to the system. The free enthalpy G, a measure of instability, will never spontaneously increase. G may be calculated by this equation from H and S. This equation is often called the Gibbs-Helmholtz equation. G is measurable as useful work that would occur in a reversible process. Gibbs free energy depends, like H and S, on temperature, phase, chemical structure and dilution which we have already listed for H and S. And the arbitrary zero point of G are the elements at 298 Kelvins. Each process, whether physical, chemical or biochemical, can be characterized by specifying deltas, changes of thermodynamic state variables. The enthalpy change delta H, a measure of the energy change, the entropy change delta S, a measure of the change in disorder, and delta G, a measure of the change in instability. When the enthalpy change is positive, the process is called endothermic. Enthalpy of the final state is greater than the enthalpy of the initial state. In the opposite case, when enthalpy decreases, we speak of an exothermic process. If we consider the change of the chaos during a process, we may distinguish between an endotropic process, chaos in the system increases, and an exotropic process. The chaos decreases locally in the system. Most important is a change in Gibbs free energy in instability. If Gibbs free energy increases during the process, that is, final state is more unstable than the initial state, we speak of an endergonic process. If delta G is negative, the final state is more stable than the initial state, it's an exergonic process. These specifications can be applied to any physical and chemical process. An example which we have already discussed is the Carnot engine. Another example is the evaporation of water at 25 degrees Celsius. Initial state, liquid water at 25 degrees Celsius. Final state, only gaseous water vapor at 25 degrees Celsius and one bar. Looking through our energy glasses, we see the following enthalpy profile. In going from the pure initial state to the pure final state, enthalpy increases. The enthalpy increase in this endothermic process is 44 kJ per mole. Looking through the entropy glasses, we see an increase of chaos in the system during the process. 
The entropy difference between the pure initial state and the pure final state is 119 joules per mole in Kelvin. An endotropic process. Most important is the discussion of Gibbs free energy. The profile shows an overall increase in instability in going from pure liquid water to pure gaseous water vapor. Delta G naught, standard free Gibbs energy change, is 8.6 kilojoules per mole for this endergonic process. The final state is indeed more unstable than the initial state. But between the initial state and final state, there is a minimum in free energy, corresponding to a maximum of stability. This is the equilibrium of the process. Water will evaporate until this extent of reaction psi then the process will come to a standstill macroscopically. From the standard Gibbs free energy change delta G naught, often called standard drive or standard thermodynamic affinity, you can calculate the equilibrium constant of the process. Let me give you an example for a chemical equilibrium. The dissociation of N2O4 is an endothermic process. The enthalpy of one mole of reactant N2O4 is 9.368 kilojoules. The enthalpy of two moles of NO2 is 66.64 kilojoules. This corresponds to a standard process enthalpy of about 57 kilojoules. The entropy increases in this dissociation too. For the complete reaction, it would increase from 304.3 to 479.6 joules per Kelvin, an endotropic process. Now for the most important delta G, because we can use it to directly detect and calculate equilibrium. The Gibbs energy profile clearly shows that the products, 97.7 kilojoules, are more stable than the reactants, 102 kilojoules. But there is an extent of reaction which is still lower in Gibbs energy, the most stable reaction mixture. A mixture at about 82% conversion has the greatest stability. This mixture corresponds to the equilibrium state where the law of mass action applies. Both pure reactants and products will react towards equilibrium downhill the Gibbs energy profile. Chemical thermodynamics in a nutshell. Enthalpy, entropy and Gibbs free energy are the most important variables in thermodynamics. Each process can be characterized by specifying delta H, delta S and delta G. H is a measure of energy, S is a measure of chaos, and G is a measure of instability of the system. Of particular importance is Gibbs free energy profile of a process, since its minimum determines equilibrium. Thanks for watching. Bye.